What's up YouTube? This is Matt from Tech by Matt and today I'm coming at you guys with my ultimate $400 gaming PC. Now before we get into the video, I just want to give a big shout out to Glasswire for making this video possible. Glasswire is a great firewall software that allows you to visualize your network activity in an easy to digest way. It's the best firewall software I've ever used and I'll leave a link down below to my full review of the software as well as a link to the Glasswire site where you can download it for free or purchase an upgraded version for added features. So like I said in the intro, this is my ultimate $400 gaming PC using all new parts. My other two builds have been with used parts which made them very hard to replicate and because of the numerous requests, I decided to make this with all new parts and although I didn't go out of my way to find extremely cheap parts, many of the parts were found on sale and prices do fluctuate daily so in the description I'll leave both the parts list for the exact build but I'll also leave a second one that I'll update over time to show the best current value parts to replace ones of the build that have gone up in price or have been discontinued. So talking about parts, let's get into the parts that make up this PC. Starting out with the CPU, I went with the AMD 860K. This is a quad-core CPU on AMD's FM2 Plus platform that is unlocked, which allows for substantial overclocking. The base clock of the AMD 860K is 3.7 GHz, but with the help of some other key components, I was able to get a stable overclock of 4.5 GHz. I may have been able to squeeze a little more performance out of the CPU, but I felt like a 20 plus percent overclock was very good. Now many of you may question why I didn't choose the Intel Pentium G3258, and the reason is that the 4 cores of the 860K should provide a better gaming experience into the future as games start to support more cores, with some games currently not even starting up on CPUs with less than 4 threads. With all that being said, I have nothing against the G3258 and think it's a great alternative to the AMD 860K that provides a great upgrade path to an i3, i5, or i7. Cooling this CPU is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is a very beefy tower heatsink with a 120mm fan and 4 direct contact copper heat pipes. This allows for substantial overclocking but also very quiet operation especially compared to something like the stock CPU cooler. This cooler also came with a $5 mail-in rebate that allowed me to fit it into this tight budget. Moving on to the motherboard, I went with the cheapest A88X motherboard available that had decent reviews which ended up being the ASRock FM2 A88M Pro 3 Plus Micro ATX motherboard. This motherboard came with a $10 mail-in rebate making it very inexpensive. It features USB 3.0 on the back I.O., an onboard USB 3.0 header, 4 DDR3 DIMM slots, and a full PCIe Gen 3 16x slot for our graphics card. It's important to keep in mind that if you want to overclock your FM2 Plus CPU, you should get an A88X chipset motherboard that provides better cooling for higher and safer overclocks. For RAM, I went with a single 8GB stick of 1600MHz Averix RAM that actually glows a very nice blue color when the PC is powered on. 8GB is going to provide plenty of RAM for most any activity, including any modern game. Moving on to storage, I went with the 1TB Western Digital Blue hard drive. This is kind of the de facto standard for budget PC storage, but if you're someone who doesn't need that much storage for around the same price, you could opt for a 240GB SSD, which will give you better boot time, faster file transfers, and overall increased snappiness of your system. For graphics, I went with the EVGA GTX 950 for the win edition that actually has a very nice backplate and was on sale when I was purchasing these parts. But it's going to perform almost the same as every other GTX 950 so just go for the cheapest one you can find from a brand that you trust. This card provides a very good amount of graphical horsepower for its price point. Powering the system is an EVGA 430 watt 80 plus certified PSU. This provides an ample amount of power at a very affordable price. EVJ is one of the only companies that manufactures quality budget power supplies and I highly recommend that. All of these components are wrapped up inside of the Cougar Spike Gaming Tower Case, which is the only unusually low discounted item in this build, which I actually got for only $13 during a liquidation sale, but any $20 case that supports a micro ATX motherboard would work just fine. Now let's move on to the gaming benchmarks. I think many of you are going to be surprised at the performance of this system. This is truly a bona fide 1080p gaming machine. The first game I decided to test was GTA 5. This is a great game to test because it is both very CPU and GPU intensive and will show if the choice of the AMD chip was a wise one. Using the built-in GTA 5 benchmarking tool, I saw an overall average of 52 frames per second on what I would consider high settings, but here are the exact settings for those of you who want to see them. Moving a few of these down, I'm sure 60 FPS average is possible, but 52 average is plenty for me. 
The second game I tested was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, which is another intensive game and on the medium preset the system was able to achieve a very impressive 58 FPS average on the built-in benchmark, which is very close to that highly sought after 60 FPS. I actually didn't overclock the GPU at all, so I'm sure with a slight overclock 60 FPS average would be achievable. The final game I tested was Metro Last Light Redux, which at this point is an older game but is still very intensive. Once again, on medium graphical preset using the built-in Metro Last Light benchmarking tool, the system achieved an average of 57 frames per second, which once again probably could be boosted to 60 with a slight GPU overclock. So as you can see, the system provides what I would consider a very good gaming experience for the low price of $400. I'll have a build guide for this PC coming out in a few days, as well as a video showing what I would do with $100 more to make this system well more rounded, so definitely subscribe to get notified when I put those out. So yeah guys, this wraps this video up. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, share it on social media, consider subscribing, and this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.